It's literally as if a black hole has opened up in the sky. It was really an amazing sort of life-changing experience to watch the sun go dark and feel night happen all of a sudden. On April 8th, millions of Americans will put on funny glasses and look to the sky to see a total eclipse of the sun. It's been seven years since the last total solar eclipse in the U.S., and the next one won't happen until 2044. Usually twice a year, the moon will come directly in between the sun and the earth, blocking out some or all of its light. Dr. Valerie Ploss of Franciscan University explains it's about being in the exact right place in precisely the right time. Every once in a while, when things line up exactly right, the moon's shadow falls right on the earth and you can't see the sun. Eclipses on Earth are pretty unique, actually. If you see the pictures of Phobos passing in front of the sun on Mars, you'll see this little tiny spot passing in front of the sun. On Earth, we have a very special kind of eclipse. The moon is actually just about the same size in the sky as the sun. Their distance and size just work out so they cover the same amount of area in the sky. And so when the moon passes exactly in front of the sun, it's just large enough to block out the sun. And that's what we call a total solar eclipse. And even in that eclipse, you can still see a little bit of the sun just peeking around the sides. You can see the corona and all kinds of cool things. Essentially what they'll see over the course of two hours or so is the moon very slowly moving across the face of the sun, sort of looking like it's almost eating the sun out of the sky. And when it reaches that point of totality, it will be darker, it will be colder as well, because the moon is not only blocking the sun's light, it's blocking its warmth as well. Dr. Ploss says eclipse watchers will see a glow around where the sun will be, while pink hues color the horizon from all directions. And so what you'll see is sunset and like the crickets will go off and you know different birds will start kicking on, but only for roughly two to three minutes. Listen to the animals uh, go silent because they're a bit confused. You're gonna be able to see some things up in the sky that you wouldn't expect, like the planet Venus, the planet Jupiter, stars in the middle of the day. So we'll be able to see the entire night sky during totality which also this year includes all of the planets in our solar system and a comet. Where do I need to look to see the planets, the comet, everything? Where do I need to look in the sky? The obvious thing will of course be the totally eclipsed sun. So to the right of that is where you'll see Venus, a little bit to the right. And that will be the one that's probably really easy to spot. Even if it's a cloudy day, there will be dramatic happenings. In the minutes up to totality, it will like be like you're on a fast forward to sunset it will get much darker than on even on a clear day for totality. Many will see a partial solar eclipse on April 8th, but if you're in the path of totality, which stretches from Texas to the Northeast, you'll get the full experience, especially if the sky is clear. A total solar eclipse occurs usually around twice a year somewhere in the world. If you want to see a total solar eclipse, you need to be within a very specific region known as the path of totality. Essentially, that is the place where the moon's shadow is passing over the surface of the Earth. So the people within that path of totality will be people in parts of Mexico, the USA, and southeastern Canada as well. For those lucky enough to be in that path, you will see the sun completely covered by the moon. That's a total eclipse. For the rest of us, outside of the path of totality, you will have a partial eclipse. But if you're in the path of totality, which stretches from Texas to the Northeast, you'll get the full experience, especially if the sky is clear. You might ask, why doesn't this happen 12 or 13 times a year? Why don't they just cross each other in the sky once a month as the moon goes around the earth? As it turns out, the moon is actually tilted five degrees relative to the path that is the orbit of the earth around the sun. Because the moon isn't perfectly lined up with the sun, the moon's shadow sometimes misses the Earth. So if you take two circles, you'll see that if you tilt them by five degrees, you get two crossing points. You're guaranteed to get at least two eclipses per year. Experts tell us a total solar eclipse covers the same spot on Earth roughly once every 375 to 400 years. The 2024 total solar eclipse crossing the U.S. has been known years ahead of time, and scientists have known exactly what it will look like. So why the hype? Why is this one particularly interesting is because we're actually in a period of solar maximum or high solar activity. So there is a chance we may have a confluence of two events. We could actually have an eclipse and at the same time have something cool happen like a coronal mass ejection, which is the sun basically burps out a lot of material which could come flying toward the earth and we might be able to see that at the same time. 
because the sun goes through a cycle of activity. It's about 11 to 12 years. NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy said a major focus will be on the sun's corona, the outermost part of the sun's atmosphere. This is a very elusive region and it can be viewed during a solar eclipse in a very special way. Eclipses offer unique opportunities to study the outer atmosphere of the sun because the sun is too bright to see it. It's just like you don't see stars during the daytime, but the stars are there. So it's the same thing. The corona is always there, but we can't see it because you have the solar disk that's so bright. The difference in brightness between the two is about a million times. If we can catch a coronal mass ejection, it would be really lucky because we can analyze it, analyze its chemical composition, analyze the temperature distribution. The sun's atmosphere is really funny because it's hot. The corona of the sun gets up to a couple million degrees, but the surface of the sun is only about 6,000 degrees. And you think the further away you get from a fire, the colder it gets. Why the corona is so hot and why it's moving at high speeds, about a million miles an hour, the solar wind spreading out from the sun, are two of the big questions that we have. And close to the sun is where that atmosphere is being heated and accelerated, and that's where the action is happening. You can be injured by a solar eclipse. If you look directly at the sun, then the invisible rays, so the ultraviolet and the infrared, can burn your eyes. The safest way is to not look at the sun. So the safest way would be to do it indirectly. If you go to NASA's website, you can figure out how to build what's called a pinhole projection camera, which will allow you to cast the sun's image and the eclipse onto a viewing screen or even onto the ground. The important thing is as the eclipse is coming, you want to wear special eclipse glasses that are going to uh, protect your eyes. And eclipse glasses are uh, not the same as sunglasses. They're more than a thousand times darker than sunglasses. The AAS has a warning out about counterfeit and fake eclipse glasses. The organization says counterfeit glasses are made by one manufacturer, but fraudulently printed with the name of another. It says fake ones are glasses which are unsafe. But anybody can say that their glasses are safe and print that standard on the glasses. And we have unfortunately seen a few cases of glasses in the market that have that standard printed on them and are not in fact safe. They aren't any darker than normal sunglasses. There is a way to test if your glasses are unsafe. Put them on inside first. Kohler says you should not be able to see anything through them. If they pass that test, wear them outside and look around. Again, you should not see anything. Then, with them on, look at the sun briefly. Kohler says it should look like a disc that is comfortably bright. Solar eclipse glasses are really boring for everything except looking at the sun. Some old myths are resurfacing. One of them is that you need your solar eclipse glasses for the entirety of the event. While that is mainly true, during full totality, you can take off your glasses and look at the eclipse. Once the eclipse happens and the totality happens, you can take those glasses off because the sun is blocked. The moon is actually completely covering the entire face of the sun. So you can look directly up at the sun and the moon together and you will not be able to see any part of the sun at all except for its outer atmosphere and that is safe to look at during totality. Although it will be blocked for a short period, any time before or after that you're going to sustain a, a lot of energy into the eye, so play it safe. Just be in the moment, experience the eclipse, look at it, and I guarantee you, you will remember it for the rest of your life whether you have a picture of it or not.